Jason Ware. Yep. Dave Waddington. Here. Sherry Waddington. Yep. Bernie Seiler. Uh, he's excused. Okay. Uh, Annette Soleil. Here. Sean Coakley. Here. Condra Percy. Here. Devin Johnson. Here. Barb Rose. Here. Larry Ware. Mm -hmm. Excused. Larry's out of pocket. Yep. All right, looking over last month's minutes. Any corrections? Okay. I'll make a motion we approve. Second. Second. All favor? Oh, my gosh. Who second? Barb? Oh, she was asking who's second. Are you both doing I, notes? I who, yeah, it's just easier if we both take them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, we have a few guests. Do we need to log in names and for guests on there? Do you need names for guests? Can you all use your microphones, please? Yep. Thank you. Or just who do you log them in once they come up to speak if they have any public comment? All right. Moving on. Um, first thing is we have a presentation from. Aaron Blair and Chris uh, Mailing uh, about the Sandusky Skate Park. Um, it's good to see that on our agenda as, as things are moving forward um, with the skate park. It, it, is, uh, it is still one of the most popular places to skate in town and, and being able to put some attention to it and some um, funds toward it will be, will be awesome. Um, Aaron is our chief planner and Without further ado, <laughs> hi, it's nice to meet you. I'm Erin Blair, chief planner for the city. I work with Jonathan, Chris, and Jason in the community development department. Um, I'm usually uh, doing this kind of job with public arts, landmarks commission, and planning commission. So um, it's great to be with you here today. We are bringing you a brief of the uh, scope that we're going to bring to city commission at the next city commission agenda on September 26th to do a design for a new skate park for Sandusky. This is a place where we have a lot of stakeholders that are using the park on a daily basis, people of all ages and skill levels that are really passionate to see us build a new skate park. I know that there's been conversations about doing this for a couple years, so I'm really excited to be able to <coughs> take this uh, scope of services to City Commission. Um, we hope that you'll support the project and really just wanted to give you an overview of the scope itself. Uh, so if you would like to be involved in the process, you know that we're about to launch it and you're welcome to join us. We'll be having three community meetings it, as part of the, the planning process. So the scope itself is uh, led by OHM advisors. They are landscape and architects, engineers, and planners. So they're really qualified to lead a project manager process. So bring the people along that every, that talk to everybody that they need to talk to, bring the stakeholders along, make sure that our skaters, our BMX riders, our scooter riders, the parents of those riders are involved in the process and driving the design. Uh, so OHM will be really good at gathering everybody together. With their landscape architect expertise, they will be able to take a look at the site context as well. So how do you get in and away from the park safely if you're in a vehicle, if you're getting there, or if you're, you know, riding a bike there or skateboarding there. Also, what kind of amenities surround the skate park amenities themselves? So shade, benches, drinking fountain, that sort of thing. So with their recreation planning and landscape architecture, they'll be a great lead for the team. We selected OHM based on uh, our qualifications packages that we have registered with the city, uh, looking for that project management, landscape architecture, and also engineering expertise. So they can look at the the survey of the site, the topography, the soil quality, and they have those engineers on their team to make sure that we're not designing something that can't be constructed where it is. They, we reached out to them based on their, um, they are highly selected in our qualification packages and said, hey, we'd love to engage with you on this project. 
bring us a proposal that includes a highly renowned skate park specialist designer on your team. And what they brought us was a proposal with Spone Ranch. And Spone Ranch is out of Colorado. They are specialists. They've been doing this for 30 years. Um, they're their sentiment is that they create wheel-focused works of art that build communities and, I can't read my own writing, and change <laughs> lives. <laughs> uh, knowing that our stakeholders really want to see a destination skate park here in Sandusky, and we want to support that. So having those experts on board, they do community engagement design. They actually build. They're all users of skate parks. I mean, these are folks that have been on an, on some sort of wheeled device since they were a young age, and they're, they're experts at this. So we really think that this, this is a winning team. Uh, it'll be about a four-month process. And we're actually starting, even before we get started, I've already scheduled two stakeholder meetings next week just for the folks that we know that they're watching. They're like, when's this going to happen? We're excited. So we've got next Wednesday evening, Chris and I are going to go out, and Jason, I think, is able to join us too. We're going to go out to the skate park, talk with folks who are there, anybody that's invited, just to tell them about this process and say, hey, we're going to city commission. Um, let them know what's going on, Q&A of just how we got to this place, and um, um, we're also going to do a Teams meeting during lunch on Tuesday, so anybody that's not available on Wednesday. So we've, we've been engaging with this community and continue to engage with this community and look forward to really uh, broadening that coalition of support for the skate park project itself. Excuse me. I also am excited to work with Chris Mailing on this project. So from a planning and community engagement perspective, um, I'm really well equipped to help kind of launch the process. And then from a project management perspective, Chris will be well equipped to get this thing built so everyone can start enjoying it. So we'll be closely collaborating through the whole time and um, and then he'll be making sure that it hits the ground and people can play with it. So, if you want to mention anything else, I don't know. I didn't. We didn't, you know, practice as much ahead of time. <laughs> no, but go I ahead. Mean, I'm looking forward to working with you as well. And, and it, you know, I've been looking at some of the past meetings that you've had, and there's definitely a call out for improvements with the skate park and to make this a destination park. Um, I'm so excited to get it started and and get people over there so the residents can use a quality facility. So looking forward to it. Thanks. What questions do you have for us? Yeah. The site area, will it pre pretty much be the same then? We are looking at the existing site, including the drive-in, you know, it's just like kind of a boundary around where the existing site is in that green space. What we've heard from the users is that they really like being on the waterfront. It is downtown. It's a really accessible site. It'll become even more accessible because of the multi-use pathway coming up Meg Street with Sandusky Bay Pathway connectivity. Um, if, it, if early on the process, it becomes very clear that that's not the right place for it, we will adjust the scope of Accordingly. And if it is going to be in this area, what about like restrooms to use? That's so a great question. We can. Bodies, you know, I'd like to see a uh, you know, uh, small restroom area, you know, building like we got throughout downtown. Yeah, yeah. Part of the the beginning planning process is like, what are the components? What are what are the necessary components of this that must have? And restrooms can be part of that consideration. And, and what were the. Uh, Dates, times, locations of those three community meetings. I know you mentioned one. Those, so the one next week is not even part of the okay. consultant proposal. That's just us being like, right. hey. Yeah, with identified us, stakeholders, you've already, okay. Yeah. Do you so, have the other ones? The, we, we don't have any dates set yet. So the next, the, the scope has them, and um, the first three weeks, the, the consultant team just gathering information, then getting their engineers on board. And they have the public and stakeholder engagement. So what they'll want to talk to like the sailing club and Battery Park Marine operator and the Justice Center project, maybe the architects there or the courts or you know that entity, all kind of the surrounding ones, and we'll have a community meeting. So we'll schedule that and widely publicize it and make sure you all are. Sure. Better. I mean you're looking at what Late October, it sounds like, maybe, or November. I don't want to hold yeah. you to a date. Just no, that sounds right. Speed. Like mid-October, late October. That's okay. Right. That sounds right. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for her? Well, thanks for all your work that you do to make sure that we have great recreation in the city. I really appreciate it. Will, will you guys be back once you've 
you know, kind of compiled what the project is going to look like and there is a spot the game where plan, shall say. There's, uh, so they're going to develop, based on the initial community meeting and the stakeholder outreach and all the engineering stuff they do, they're going to do, they're going to develop two concepts and there will be a meeting time with those two concepts to say, you know, what's our preferred concept that they'll then design. So that would be good, another good touch point to come to you all. Or okay. if you want to send a representative to make sure that you have representation at the community meeting. Um, I'll rely on Jason to kind of drive what the best approach will be for okay. that, but we definitely want you involved in the process. Great. I'll bring those dates to the October meeting too, so you'll have those. Or communicate it out if it's before we meet yeah, again. email. Sure. Great. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Chris. All right, moving on our old business. Mills Creek. Mills Creek was busy today, huh? A little busy today. <laughs> Uh, tonight actually is our last Wednesday night league, so we're finishing up with our leagues, so that's completed. Um, I have a couple pieces of information for you. I have our August revenue summary, um, $43,830, which was our August revenue. Um, actually one of the best Augusts we've had out there. We were extremely busy. Uh, we had... Um, two outings out there, so, but we just had very continuous stream of golfers out there. And then also I have the comparison from the last three years, and we finished at the end of August at $186,207.25. Uh, we've now eliminated that deficit that we had from last year. Uh, and actually, we went over the $200,000 mark last week. So we are over $200,000. So that is where we stand at the revenue. Uh, we have started selling season passes. And the season passes we're doing right now is we're selling them. And they can use them for this year and the remainder of this year and all of next year. We will offer some, um, we always do Thanksgiving, we do a, a special, uh, we, we knock a little bit off the price and that's on uh, the week of Thanksgiving. So that's coming up for passes. Uh, we actually have probably the most junior season passes that we have sold so far. I think we have sold six so far. We have a, a few of uh, Perkins students have now bought season passes. Um, so they're out there. They're in college. They come out in the morning and golf before they go to class. Cool. So we're getting that. Uh, we had our last shoot out from the SBC last week. Uh, we had that Wednesday was the Sandusky Boys Group and um, Thursday was the Sandusky Girls. Uh, each one of those days brought, brought 60 golfers from area from anybody in their divisions. Uh, those are, have been very well received. Um, Sean, if you can take that information back to your athletic directors, then we do appreciate the shootouts. Um, it affords us just a small amount of time that we actually have to close the golf course down. So, um, and we have made, and with the number of spectator carts that we have rented, I would say we've balanced out on our revenue. So we really didn't see the effects with the shootouts. So um, we have a few more. I think I have two next week and then one the following week and then the golf season for high school is complete. So we have three more matches left. Uh, we have a couple outings coming up. We have our member appreciation this Saturday. We have next week is our year end for our Thursday night league. And then we have one private outing on next Sunday. So we have that. Um, in regards to the uh, advisory board that we created, we had a, a, an additional meeting um, which Tom, I, I think that was a very productive meeting. We actually went hole by hole and looked at any issues that were on, and Chris was there as well. We went hole by hole. We looked on amenities that possibly we, wanna, we want to add. Uh, maybe I, I, we chose to uh, do some upgrades on some of our sand traps. Uh, we had, had mentioned that we would like to add some trees and Aaron Klein has some money left in his forestry budget, so we're working on adding those. 
I've submitted that list over to Nate, the forester, so we can get that moving, so we can get some trees planted this year. Uh, some of them, especially over on the newly acquired land that we purchased from the diocese, just to do some, you know, replacement of trees that we have lost. So we're we're looking at at doing that. Um, we've compiled a pretty comprehensive list that we're gonna we're in the process of finalizing. We'll meet one more time. We'll bring it back our complete comprehensive uh, list for rec board, and then we'll present it to commission. Um, we really focused uh, looking at the golf course, not as just a golf course, but as a site. So what we can do with it off season as well. Uh, that was something that we were trying to uh, brainstorm on things that we could do that we could make it multi, multi-seasonal. Um, I think one, everyone's number one was making sure we can get, can get that cart path uh, slash walking trail completed and make it a complete loop throughout the course. So that look, seems to be our number one priority when, as we were looking at those types of things. So, um, we did, uh, I have been in contact with uh, Ohio Department of Natural Resources. We're going to add uh, a pollinator garden uh, in over by hole number eight in the eye, or where the island is. And then we're also going to create between four, five, and six, we're going to create a prairie area. So they are um, consulting us on what exactly we need to do to properly do those things. So, but uh, we'll ha we'll bring that plan to you. Probably we'll have it done by the next meeting. We'll be able to bring the complete plan for what the advisory committee has developed. Okay, sure. Mr. Elliott, if the property tax is expired, now we're out of that. We're not going to get out of your tax. I know we did the deal with the churches. Is that all done now? Or do we owe a second half? Or have we heard any confirmation on that? I'll um, talk with the finance department and get back to you on that. I know that um, there was um, some consideration of that in the closing in terms of any outstanding taxes. Yeah, I never saw any follow-up on that. Maybe. I'll check in and see where that stands and get back to uh, you and the board on where the taxes stand for the the golf course property. But it's all, we're all resound with the church. I've had a couple of people ask me if that's all, that's all finalized. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. I'm uh, happy to say that the property did transfer just as, as planned. The church was a great partner. Um, I think we're still um, keeping an eye out for opportunities to highlight that major accomplishment. I want to say that the city had leased that property since the late 40s, early 50s, mm -hmm. we found. Um, so it's really fantastic yeah. to bring that into our ownership and to know that, that we control the future of the of the golf course. Um, and, and the church was a great partner. So um, yeah, to answer your question, that, that transfer is completed and that's all set. Final thing, I probably checked a lot of permit. In the winter, it's open, it's just a park. Like after we close on, say, November 15th, September day, it's if residents want to come out, it's a nice day, you can come out and walk on the golf course, correct? Uh, that's totally up to our discretion. Um, there's no restrictions that the, the um, diocese placed on us going forward in terms of uh, seasonal use. Um, no, I mean, it's our property now. I'm saying if I want to go out for a walk, <laughs> park out there and I can walk around on the golf course property. Mm -hmm. You could do that probably before. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Because there was some question if we, I said, I would think in the winter if you wanted to walk out there, I, would, I don't see a problem with that. That's what we want to do with that path, and now yeah, we can. Yeah. How we can That's why we want it. Mm -hmm. Grant funding to, for the entire course now that we own the entire property. Yeah. And we still do have the one grant out there that uh, Nature Works grant that they rolled over from last year. Uh, they informed me that that would be a September award, so we're still in the running for that money from there. Thank you. All right, moving on. That, you're back up. Right back from up. the golf course to the ice rink. <laughs> yeah, golf course to ice rink, yes. Uh, this is the Savista Bank ice rink. We put an RFP out for that, and uh, we received one proposal back from that, and that was from a Global Ice. Um, 
We have uh, contacted all of their um, references. We've actually had some conversations back and forth. Uh, any questions that we may have had, we have contacted them. We've contacted uh, places who actually are using them. So uh, we are in the process now uh, of putting together uh, a uh, our information to go to commission. Uh, what I presented to you guys was the uh, the amount, what they brought in. The amount, what they brought in for their uh, their bid, and then also the additional needed items that we did. So we ended up going ahead and uh, we, Jason and Scott James, who is our, our uh, property maintenance guy, uh, we sat down and we looked at things that we thought that were necessary for us to, to have a successful, successful ice skating rink. So uh, the first box that you have there is what they proposed. The size of it would be an 80 by 52, so it is larger. Um, it would be the one thing that they didn't have is that we wanted the interlocking, uh, but their system has an underlayment that allows for the, the expansion and contraction. So I think that makes a big difference. Um, we also talked to them about using the uh, cleaner and those types of things, so we've looked at things a little bit differently. So um, this rink would also include a dasher board that would enclose the rink completely. And uh, we are also proposing to do a transition area as well. So the first part is the necessary items, the first block. The additional needed items are the second block. And actually we've gotten some quotes on other things and they're less than what we've actually figured here. So you're saying the top part of the flooring is going to be the same as what was there? It is, but it, it is, but it isn't. It is. It's an interlocking one, but they use an underlayment. Um, and I spoke to uh, Jackson Township in Ohio actually has the same system, which obviously their weather is very similar to ours. And the gentleman said that they had absolutely no problems with it. So the system we had last year did not have the underlayment. And when I spoke to the gentleman right from Global, he said the underlayment is definitely helps with keeping that surface smooth. That was one of the it, it was. I understand. And our maintenance, we'll be able to keep our own maintenance of, of this as well. Right, and and actually, when we when we spoke to the gentleman um, from Global um, with the cleaning process, they actually uh, instructed us to do cleaning differently than what we did from the company who we rented it from. So uh, that's why we're they proposed to use a floor machine so that you can actually go ahead and keep it cleaner. Do you have to hire more people? Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Any other questions on that? Any questions for me? Okay. All right. Um, thanks, Annette. Yep. And Tondra, anything going on over at Mills? Oh. <laughs> yes, there's a lot going on over at Sandusky Rec at Mills. Um, we will begin our first time ever um, out of school programming um, during the danger zone hours starting Monday, September 19th, Monday through Thursday from three doors open at 3.30 uh, and it goes to seven. You can start picking kids up at 6.45. Um, and there is also Tab Fit is back the tribe is demanding to put feet beats on to make some noise. So we're going to do that on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, at Mills. Um, that's our fall out of, out of school at Mills programming, and those are the updates. We do a, there's a lot of heavy uh, posting on Facebook on our page, Sandusky Rec, and the uh, what's going on Sandusky page, and also 
the South Side for Life page, which uh, Mills is located on the South Side, so they're um, very interested. Right now we have um, over 50 kids signed up. There has been a few parents that reached out to me and said there were some difficulties, um, wouldn't allow them to register kids. <coughs> Hmm. And one said that the system didn't recognize her email, but she's, I don't know what's going on with that. We can help them with that. Yeah, we'll help them. Yeah. Is there a cutoff? A cutoff on, on the amount? Uh, we are capping at 120, so we got a little ways to go, and I'm sure it's just going to be just a matter of time before we reach that kindergarten through eighth grade. And then anybody that is in high school, we um, offer and encourage to come and get some volunteer hours. Anybody else that would like to do, there's a process, there's a volunteer application you can fill out. Um, we do have homework help that we need some <coughs> volunteers to, that's part of the program. Um, but it's, it's, it's pretty uh, impactful. I'm excited about what we're gonna be doing there. Yes. I got, I got a couple questions. Yes, sir. Um, Monday through Thursday, 3.30 to 7. Yes. Who is going to be there? And if an accident or something, are we going to have qualified people, I hope, hanging around? And then I worked uh, second shift for several years, and you can say uh, pick your kid up by 7, and you'll have starting hours at 8 o'clock at night. Understandable. So, I mean, uh, we all know, well, Sean, mm -hmm. you should know that, right, from the high school. <laughs> It's like, can I use your phone, Mr. Wright? Can you call my <laughs> It's like, really? You know, right. So, you know, so, yeah. Good. Is that, that's, a, that's a, it? Yeah, just kind of wondering. Yeah. I want to make sure that we don't have extra people <laughs> walking in. We've got doors open. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. I understand. So, with my experience in, in this arena, I'm, I'm uh, um, changing up editing my schedule and we'll be there on site, but I also have staff that are there. Uh, we encourage people to pick their kids up starting at 6.45, but I do understand. And it's not just the parents that are late. Kids be like, can I just play one more game of ball or whatever? Um, so we are, um, we really didn't run into a lot of that when we had the summer break camp. There were a few kids that parents did oversleep or forgot, but I don't see that as an issue as far as safety. You know, I'm big on that. That's, that's number one. That's one of the, the cornerstones of our programming, and we, we uh, you know, I pride ourselves on that. So the doors have been secured with a buzz-in system. Granny Pat is at the welcome desk. You know, she's the... Um, Middle school bouncer, is that what you call her? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so she's uh, security, but she can, you know, she uh, buzzes people in, and they have to see her. No one is willy-nilly in the building. Um, they're also our staff that we hired, our CPR first aid and AED trained and certified. Um, so if there's any incidents like that, um, you know, we, 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 we got it pretty down on lot. And I'm sure police go by there. Oh, yeah, we're going to be heavy on uh, the community impact officers as well, okay. being part of being making that normal okay, that they're there. Okay, that's good. Yep. Thank you. Yep. One more question. Yes, sir. Um, as far as transportation to the school after school, is it um, their bus is provided or should the parents drop the kids off? Uh, parents will be at this point required to drop the kids off or kids can choose to walk from you know third through 12th grade are right up the road there on Hayes and it's you know um, I have a guy's son who's 12 who missed the bus and he's middle school he walked two meals um, he could have got there a little sooner but he didn't want to crease his <laughs> tennis shoes so he walked a little funny but there there you know again we had seven weeks of a monday through friday program in the summer and we didn't provide transportation and these kids came from all over um so i understand it might be you know i don't i don't foresee it being a barrier as far as the uh, attendance but you know we are you know maybe in the future we'll try to you know, make some kind of um, um, relationship where there will be uh, transportation provided. Because it does make it a little easier, you know, for some parents that can't get their kids down there. But, right. I, yes? Uh, something else to spot me. In the event of bad weather, yeah. you have, you can get a hold of somebody at the schools, they can make an announcement that we're shut down and <laughs> snowing out or, you know, Tim, uh, zero, so we have to yeah, so uh, normally, like if there is a uh, level, whatever level, and we're 
We, we, we don't follow the Sandusky uh, City Schools calendar as far as off uh, days when they're closed. We definitely are open. So any time that there's a break from school or any time there's out of school, uh, professional days, things like that, holidays, some holidays, you know, we, we will be in the building. But when it comes to weather, you know, we will make that call and, and we'll, you know, we'll reach the parents or whatever. Dave, our rec desk system that we use is really good because if they leave us a phone number and they have uh, uh, agreed to be in, we can send in one a message working a working phone number. <laughs> That's true. That but we can send out a text message. Yeah. So uh, we at least have that ability to have that as well. Yeah. Volunteer spots do you have? Over I have as many volunteers that want to come in that building okay. available. And come. Also, as far as volunteering, are there any requirements? Well, there is an application you have to fill out, and there is a background check that is, <laughs> is mandatory. You can't just walk in and say, right, right. I don't know. I don't know exactly. you like that. Right. <laughs> so exactly. you got to do a background check on you and make sure that um, all that is clear. Again, safety is number one in the programming that we do. Any other questions for business? Tom? New business, Jason, you're up. All right, we are hiring our recreation administrative assistant, uh, Linda Carroll, is starting in a week, and she will be uh, one of the main focuses is not only making sure that the agenda is correct, because I already saw a, a spot where I messed up the agenda, but um, also the Mylander Pavilion, since that's become such a popular place to be, um, and some of our other event things that we have going on. Uh, she will start next Wednesday, and uh, looking forward to her starting. I don't know if anyone knows Linda, but I'm sure she'll be at the October 12th uh, rec board meeting. Okay. Bill? So Chris. the Ambit Sproul Park project is part of a bigger project in the city at the wastewater treatment plant. And with that being said, what we uh, need to do, the recreation uh, department, is we need to relocate. Actually, we're going to purchase a new playground equipment. So that, that equipment that's out at Sproul Park now will be taken down. <laughs> we'll purchase new equipment. Um, and then we will also have to relocate two of the ball diamonds, which will be back behind where the Ambets field is now. Back, for those of you that have been around for a while, the senior league used to be in the back part mm -hmm. uh, by Peerless Stove there. So um, we'll have to relocate two ball diamonds back there as well. So that's part of the bigger project at the wastewater treatment plant. That'll start up in end of October with us starting to take down the playground equipment and also some of the uh, buildings that are on site at, at Sproul Park. Yes, sir. There's three diamonds down there by the playground equipment. You're gonna remove two of them and leave one down there and put new playground equipment in that area? So the diamonds that are there right as soon as you go into the park to the left of the drinking fountain, that diamond I believe is diamond two. I don't know the numbers by heart yet, but so it would be the one that's on the southwest side right by the gate on, okay. uh, what is that, Harrison? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So that one will stay, and then the one directly north of it will stay as well. The okay. one back, I believe it's number three, is Might the one that's one. coming out, okay. and then where the old T-ball field was, which has already been taken out, okay. um, that area will all change. Okay. What is the purpose of this? So it's part of a bigger project with the uh, wastewater treatment plant, so they actually have to take over some of the space in order to expand... Uh, the wastewater treatment plant. It, it was part of the acquisition of the old AMVETS senior field that they knew they were going to have expansion when they when they acquired that property. They knew they'd have expansion. They didn't know, I think, which part of the treatment plant it was going to be coming out of. So that allowed them to, if they needed to take out the two fields, they can relocate those over to the other side. I think that field that is to the, well, it's by the playground, that was the one that had the worst drainage issues, and, and that's going to, that's one of the ones that's going to be taken out, but those two fields will be located where the senior field used to be. Will anything change as far as the age groups that are allowed to play there? As far as what they're running this past season, no. I mean, they've they they started a t-ball, which 
I think was was a good thing to do on their part. They started a T-ball league, and I think they go all the way up through 12 or 13. Team. Yeah. Any questions on that project? Yeah, how can we get all the excitement for Annabelle's like we've gotten for the skating ring and all these other new projects? I'm pretty excited about being able to revamp that location. I mean, it's they they did a leadership Erie County project probably six, seven, eight years ago and made it Erie Blacktop Field and painted that. But that was just one field out there to be able to put in a new playground, um, possibly a new concession restroom uh, facility, something out there. I think that's exciting right there is to be able to. We'll be running the one that is there now that we're just finishing up with. Running the league? Well, there's still a, the, the league still has a board, the well, AMBITS board. Whoever their board is. Yeah, so I don't know if their board is changing or not. I don't know. Right. We haven't been well, that's outside of our realm, correct? I mean, that's the 70, what, 75 years they've been running that, that league. So I'm, they're still planning on being part of that field. I would say especially since they're getting a couple new fields and new playground and a revamp out there. Another revamp after your blacktop field. Did anybody have a recap of the season or all the problems or anything like that with the board? No, I mean, nothing's come to our attention as far as I know they had a uh, awards yeah, night was awards banquet. over at the MVETS where the kids got trophies and medals and yeah. um, they had a good end of this, I don't know if it was the end of the season or in the middle of the season when they had that <laughs> open, they had an open event out there that was closed, they closed the street and had dunk tank and, but have you, I mean, is there something you, you no. had? Okay. Under back to you. Nope, that's that's my typo. A typo? That's my typo. So I meant to do that as a uh, programming update as far as what we have coming in October, <laughs> which would be. Um, oh, well, but actually, I got something though I want to update on. Okay. I forgot, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, even starting this Friday, uh, <laughs> we have our movies at the marina starting. Uh, that's kind of a new thing that we're having movies out there uh, again, even though we did uh, movies by the bay there probably with that old foldable screen that was very kind of tough to put up it's in the wind. Right. It was all right. <laughs> um, so starting Friday, we're showing, um, these aren't like rated G kids movies. These are like movies that people maybe throwback movies that they may have saw 20, 30 years ago. But Overboard uh, is Friday. Captain Ron is Saturday. Um, and those were kind of requests from Sandusky Dental Partners and Dockside, the movies that they kind of wanted to see uh, shown out there, and they're they're sponsoring them. And then next week, um, we're going to show Jaws, the original Jaws, Need a Bigger Boat. Mm -hmm. um, and then on Saturday, we wrap up the, the uh, four movie season with a uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, so those will all be at seven o'clock. We if we have a rain event, uh, this weekend looks pretty good, but if next weekend we have to look at rain, we'll probably bump it to a double double feature if we have to, if we know we're going to have uh, some weather. So um, people will be able to sit on their boats. Actually, the way we want to angle the screen is to where people could sit from even almost from dockside on the hill, and then if people were sitting on their boats, they'd be able to see uh, the movie as well. So <laughs> that should be fun. And then uh, the week after that, uh, Witches Walk, who has named Sandusky Rec as one of their um, fundees for the Witches Walk this year, they, they've made a contribution last year. Uh, Cora has approached us about doing Hocus Pocus, the, orig the original Hocus Pocus at, uh, back at the, uh, the pavilion that'll be at the pier on Saturday, October 1st. Correct. And I think they have a 6.30 date, because, or 6.30 time because of getting darker a little bit quicker, but um, Hocus Pocus, and um, I think, did you have an update on, is that what your update was about too? No. Okay, well, the, <laughs> <laughs> just a couple other dates, and I'll go to Tondra, but um, the Cedar Point Trick or Treat is uh, Wednesday, October 26th, uh, and that's open to, I believe, Sandusky residents and others, and anyone, <laughs> basically anyone that shows up. <laughs> 
What and, time is that, Jace? Uh, this trick or treat usually every from six to eight, and asking if you're interested in helping with that. You and Dante have always been okay. And then our downtown trick or treat is scheduled for that Saturday, October 29th. And I confirmed with Joe earlier this week that we'll be able to do the cruise um, at one o'clock with the kids and families. So we go out. Yep. Okay. Depending on the weather. Right. Yeah. So a Halloween cruise. And then our last party at the pier is tomorrow night with the Vindies starting at 7, and that's at the Jack Street Pier. So any questions on some programming things that we have going on? All right, what was yours, Tondra? Sorry. Uh, my update for uh, some of you back at Mills. So um, when we leave, when, we, when this is over, I'm headed back over to Mills. I would, I'm, I'm really, really could uh, use the support of the reg board to even just stop by and visit. Um, you can take a tour. You'll be very pleased at what we're doing in that building. Anytime you want to come, we would greatly appreciate it and have, um, if you have volunteer hours as well. But the Dress for Success program with Dustin Sharp is going to be moving into Mills on the second floor, and that is the Gentleman's Club. Um, we're happy about that. I, I guess um, from what it's been, it's been in the basement at Jackson, mm -hmm. and now it'll be coming up to uh, at Mills and maybe try to uh, enhance that program and, and offer um, whatever, you know, the uh, ability to get suits, ties, shirts, dress pants for these interviews or even just mock interviews or just, you know, for the young men in, in the in the community. Also, um, the youth have spoken. I invited uh, some youth to come up to the um, second floor conference room to um, speak with and, and work with Aaron on the south side planning, uh, neighborhood planning uh, project. And one of the things that one of the young ladies spoke about was mental health uh, for, and she was 13. Like, so it, that was big. So I, I'm really um, excited about having uh, a heavy piece on mental health at REC, at Sandusky REC at Mills. Um, and I just looked at my dear friend. Let me shout out Chris Mailing. Chris has been such a, uh, a help to me um, coming into this because he's a real go-getter. So he connected with Ohio Guidestone, um, and they responded, and they're coming to visit tomorrow, along with a meeting with uh, Pete Shea from the Ohio Health Department, uh, Erie County Health Department. Um, so tomorrow we have those two meetings, and we're going to be focusing, laser beam focusing on our youth mental health. Um, which is, is real, it's big, it's, a, it's, it's huge for them to even request that at an age like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad that there's a place for that, for us to offer that. And then um, the big move, final move from 222. Listen, he's the last, <laughs> the last man standing over at the old building. So we will all be, uh, I guess, what Jason named it is the Sandusky Rec Campus <laughs> with a net at the golf course, and me and Jason across the street. Sounds good, makes sense to me. I really appreciate the um, uh, Brian Camp for coming and, and getting those weeds and everything pulled out. We got a little bit more to do, so we can have the building and the, and the grounds looking real nice for the kids when they show up on Monday. Um, um, and again, heavy on the rec board coming to visit. Please come and stop over. I'm going over there today, but I'll be in the building Monday through Thursday. Um, stop over. <clears throat> stop over when the kids are there, too, so you can see the magic happen. All right? Thank Tantra you. plays a mean game of ping pong, so. I do. I got, we got a ping pong <laughs> table. We got a pool table over there. Mr. Leroy and his friend came over. We got seniors that are, are thinking about coming and doing a little shooting pool and just talking through the day. And then the kids come at in the, in the afternoon and evening. I mean, it's a win-win at that building, and I, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of that. So if anyone has a chance after the meeting tonight. I've got a we've got an Iron Man recognition thing that I could be at, but I mean any I mean we're there Monday through <laughs> right. Friday we're there stop over and it's great the gentlemen's club's gonna I, I think it's gonna be good to have them even have a space and those those guys coming in yep. kids coming in and being able to like let them see if anyone can beat them beat you in ping pong they don't <laughs> want to smoke they don't want none of this 
All right, any uh, other questions on the new business? Open discussion. Tim? Uh, Tim Schwanger, I just have, uh, there's one, two, one or two, three concerns here that I see on a new business uh, from the meeting last month, there was discussion on merging the rec department with other departments. And, you know, I just want to share my concern that the rec department's always been a standalone uh, department. And I, I really hope that the recreation department doesn't get, you know, like shoved off to the side a little bit with all these other uh, uh, departments getting moved into the rec department. I, I kind of, I disagree with that. I think it should remain a, di uh, a standalone department. I, I don't know if this was this, the decision of the city manager. I don't know if this committee has shared their concerns about that, but I'm, I'm very much concerned with that. I think it should stay, uh, stay standalone. Um, another item is the uh, ice rink at the, uh, uh, the uh, Jackson Street Pier, that's gonna be a, a bigger rink, mm -hmm. what I understand. Yes. Is that gonna be the city's responsibility for that as far as purchase, or is, is that gonna be something that Savista Bank's also gonna- Savista Bank, it was the 100%, 100%. Okay. yes. So then along with that uh, <laughs> specific uh, discussion, last year the uh, JC Park uh, rink was not filled in a timely fashion. And the answer that we got from a city employee that was actually working at the Jackson Street Pier on that rink was that we're not going to fill the JC, JC Park rink until we close down the rink on the Jackson Street Pier. Those are two totally separate issues used by different, a different demographic. I mean, there's, there's kids that have to drive all the way to Elyria, Cleveland, Lorraine, Fremont to practice their skills can't really practice their skills on an ice rink that's synthetic. So if, you know, and I know it's way too early, it's only September, right. but the first sign of cold weather for three or four days, that JCP, JC Park rink needs to be filled. Also, there's been discussion in the last two or three years about JC Park rink. It needs to be, the flooring needs to be painted white because black absorbs sunlight, which helps with the thawing of that rink. So that needs to be painted white for this year. If we can get that, if we can get that done with some kind of rubberized paint or something that's not going to peel off uh, very quickly. Uh, Sproul Park. I don't know how many issues went on with crowd control this year, but I know there was one major one. And I know in the years past, it's been, it's, and I'm showing my age here now, probably 20 years ago, the police department did have police presence. I, I remember the, the officer's name, last name was Gambrell. He was there during games, you know, and if he got a call to go somewhere else, obviously he had to leave, but I think we need to go back to some kind of security, some kind of police presence in the future. The uh, Heron Park splash pad, uh, there was a uh, video that was uh, shared to uh, social media. That place this summer was a pig pen. And you know, I, I know that we keep adding people in the rec department, salary people. I think with a $27 million budget for next year for the city of Sandusky, another $100 million coming in from Cedar Point over a five or 20 year period, whatever it is, uh, we can sure as heck afford to hire some seasonal help to, I don't want to call it babysitting, but I think that's what it is maybe. Uh, babysit some of these parks, especially the ones that are used on a daily basis with high traffic. That's for next year. And lastly, um, I just wanted to share with this committee that I don't know if you've all seen the bike path that runs on uh, East Market, but uh, if you get a chance, drive down that way when you leave. It's a very, very dangerous situation. The way the city laid that out, they changed it from parallel parking to angled parking. We have vehicles that are actually sticking out into the, path, into the pathway. It's actually the bike path sticking out into the bike path, uh, very, very dangerous. And I don't know if you guys, you're supposed to be a recommending board and I would highly suggest that you recommend to the city manager and the public works that that be changed back to parallel parking instead of angled. Um, there's, I think there's like three or four trucks, you know, like, I don't, not like food trucks, but regular pickup trucks that when they pull in, their, their rear end is still sticking out into the bike path. 
there was a situation last week where there was a truck parked, and then on the other side, which would be on the west side, there was a van parked. The truck went to back out, and a bicycle almost ran right into the side of it. Very, 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 very dangerous situation. Uh, I think that's about it. So what do you mean by merging with the rec board? There's, from what I'm reading from the last, and maybe Jason can mm -hmm. expound on this, but the rec department, it looks like, is merging with the grounds maintenance mm -hmm. as well as greenhouse and property maintenance, making it one big three department. Maybe he can, maybe Jason can, maybe I'm wrong, but that's Sure, a, that's yeah, I mean, that's, that's part of correct. our rec admin coming in as well, as we have the greenhouse folks, grounds maintenance, which would be like Brian Camp and, and those folks that, that mow the parks and mow, mow the grounds, and then the basically public realm, you know, kind of the, the business district, those, uh, Scott James, and then there's uh, two that work with Scott are going to be part of our, basically a parks and recreation department. Uh, I know that over the past four or five years, I've had uh, a lot of communication with, with those departments and things that we have, even with the events that are going on and the different, you know, questions that we have about can we get, can we get, uh, you know, they work on the marina, they work on the boat launch, they work on getting the stage set up, they work on moving the movie screen. Um, so I, I look forward to having them on board. I know it's, um, there are a lot of parks and recreation departments throughout the state. I know that the recreation was a part of horticulture probably I don't know how many years ago that was, but it was horticulture and rec department was underneath uh, horticulture. But before. there's there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of places throughout the state and throughout the country that are basically set up like this with a parks and recreation department where they have their maintenance staff as I mean even Erie Metro Parks their whole you know maintenance staff is all part of one uh, one conglomerate group there. So and Tim, I'm just curious, like your concern you said you had for the the other departments coming, you were had some concern of what rec might turn into. What what concern would that be? Well, you know, if you're a standalone department, uh -huh. the rec department, that's what you concentrate on. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're adding this in with three other departments, which you know it it may have been part of horticulture at one time, but you know I don't know how many people were in horticulture, but we're, we're kind of like reinventing the wheel here. If it, I've always had the philosophy: if it's if it's not broke, you know, don't fix it. I, I think you might be looking at it different in a different lens. I think it's an enhancement to mm -hmm. Sandusky Way. Well, we'll stay in our lane doing what we do. I, I, right. It's only going to make us better, I believe. What, it, what, it, what it's actually doing is it, it's costing the taxpayers more money because now we're hiring somebody. To, we're hiring another salary person at probably $80,000 a year to oversee all three of these. Nobody's losing their job. Nobody's losing their job. We're creating another job for somebody to oversee all three of these departments that are coming into one. If, it, I, if something's yeah. wrong, if, if I'm wrong. You know, I know we, we, we do have an admin, but that, that admin position was a, a needed thing that just even came up with how, right. how popular the Mylander Pavilion is. Because well, no, you're talking about an administrative assistant. So Correct. I, I'm talking Jason will still remain the superintendent, and then I will still remain the golf course, and Tanner will remain doing those ones. We're not adding an additional staff member. That's not what I, that's not what I read or what I under. They, they went out for a... Uh, uh, not RFP, but like the city manager wants to hire somebody to oversee all three of y'all. Right, and they, I think they opted not to go that route. And now we have. Oh, you, uh, yeah, he's talking yeah. about the park. Yes. Yeah. park that needs a be, director, yes. Yeah. There was and not I'm, a director being that hired. That needs to be no. shared with somebody Correct. because the last time it was on you know, the city's website that they're hiring somebody to oversee all three of these you know, together. So you guys would have been under that person, and that person would have been at the top. So, and the, and the other thing is, I, I, and I don't know if I'll ever get an answer on this one or not. I've been kind of going back and forth with Jason the email. I'm just curious why there was a decision to move the screen. I get, is the screen being moved from the Jackson Street Pier down to the paper district marina? Or are we using Yeah, it was probably moved today. But I want to touch base just quick on the Huron Park question too, because I think having a parks and recreation department and having Brian and his folks and, and Scott and those folks, we can help alleviate any confusion of where people need to call uh, in the future of if there is a goose poop, you know, situation at Huron Park or something like that. But yeah, the, the movie screen, just like we moved it over for Touch a Truck 
like it's it's a mobile screen. We did our Movies by the Bay feature for oh, eight weeks, which was sponsored by Whiteman Weber as the Movies by the Bay. The, this, this Movies at the Marina came up, and again, it starts Friday, Saturday, and this week, and it's Friday, Saturday, next week. Um, came up from um, basically Dockside and, and uh, Sanusi Dental Partners being interested in not letting summer go yet in the, in the marina. Nothing ever said that the marina is not a good place to, to still do programming. It's, it's just we found a way to, to do that before the end of the summer. Okay. Who pays for all the movies? What's that? Who's paying for all the movies? Sandusky Dental Partners and Dockside. So, so basically kind of reading into this, since they're paying for it, they would like to have it kind of sort of have it at their facility since they're kind of like paying for it. They Excuse didn't me. even specify the location. Okay. It was, it was it, I, I think I actually pitched it as, hey, we can move the screen here. We can move the screen to Lions Park. We can move it to, you know, as long as we have this, the, the hook. Right. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. No. You shouldn't have said Lions Park because now I'm going to hold you to that. We could do one over at Ambex. <laughs> well, hold it to, we, hold, hold yeah. me to yeah, it. I mean, we're, the, we want to show the same line of Ambex. It's going to be big. That's the point. Yeah. yeah, that's the yeah, point. So, all right, thank you. Appreciate oh, it. Yeah. Sorry, I took too much time. No, you're fine. <laughs> Any other open discussion? Mike, Chris, Marcus? <laughs> I'm just looking at everybody in the audience. No? All right. Any other things? Marcus? Topics? No. Nothing, Marcus? <laughs> All right. Well, motion to adjourn then. Make that motion. Second.